Okay, and welcome back. So here we have another 2D kinematics problem. And this one involves a guy named Bob, and he just finished climbing a sheer cliff above a beach. He throws a rock with an initial velocity of 35 meters per second, such that the rock leaves his hand 2.5 meters above the edge of the cliff. At about 0.8 seconds, the rock is at the same level height in front of him as when the rock initially left his hand. The rock lands on the beachfront 150 meters away from the base of the cliff. How tall is the cliff? So how do we approach a problem like this? Well, what we want is this here, right? We want this height. So we want from here to here, right? That's essentially what we're looking for. Well, in order to do that, this would be an easy problem if we knew what the time was when the rock struck the ground and this angle. Unfortunately, we don't have that, right? Because if we had those two, we could use this equation here. Delta y is equal to t v sub naught sine theta minus one half g t squared. This here would give us the uh, y component of the position vector. So it would just tell us basically the position on the y axis. In this case here, actually it would be negative because we can use this as the initial point of reference, right? So this would be our initial point of reference because the ball or the rock leaves his hand, right? And it flies at this on this along this path here. And then it's at level height at this particular time. And then at this point right here, this would be the total amount of time. Actually, you know what? Let's just call this time total, right? So this would be the total time it takes, which we don't know either. But if we knew what that was, then we could just plug that into the uh, this equation here, right? So we could just say if we knew what this total time was, that would be easier, right? Along with this angle. Well, let's see. Can we use the range formula? No, because we don't know what this distance is here, right? Besides, uh, where the where the rock starts and where it lands needs to be on level ground. It lands down here, right? So you can't use the range formula. Well, this is what we know so far. The overhead view of this situation here we'd notice that the, the rock just keeps on going this way, right? So at a certain amount of time, it reaches this particular point, right? The x component of the, uh, of the velocity of the rock going, traveling from left to right is constant, right? So this is the position, right? This is just telling you how far it is, but the velocity of the rock is constant, right? It just keeps on going, right? It doesn't doesn't speed up or, or slow down. It's just constant, right? From an overhead view, remember, recall, okay? So it's an overhead view. So that's fine. So that means it would be constant here, and at this particular point here where it reaches uh, a certain amount of time, it's going to keep on going, right? So we could just pretend that the rock just keeps on traveling in this direction, right? So this would be the position in the x, uh, the x component right here. It would be this, this distance here, right? And this is 150 meters. So we can start off with this, at least... See if this helps us a little bit. So we have delta x is equal to T V sub naught cosine theta, right? And what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that it travels this amount of distance in a certain amount of time with a certain velocity if we knew the angle. So we we can use this part here, right? This this distance here plus this little distance here. And that gives us a total of 150 meters, right? So that means that I can plug in 150 into here. And this would be T, though. Which T are we looking at? Is it this T here? No, it's this T here, right? It would be the total time. So this would be T total, right? I'll just write a... It looks pretty bad. This would be T total, right? So this would be T total and V sub naught cosine theta, right? So we can isolate this t time, this t total, right? Because we would need that for this here, right? So let's just go ahead and isolate that. So this would be t total is equal to, well, this would be 150 divided by uh, v sub naught cosine theta. All right, so this would be, I guess, our first equation we're going to deal with. And now what we need, we need theta. All right, well... How can we get a theta? Let's see now. At half this time here, at 0.4 seconds, that means that the uh, velocity in the y direction is zero, right? 
So we can differentiate, the, if you're taking calculus, you could differentiate this right here, and you would get this. You get v sub y is equal to v sub naught sine theta minus gt. Okay, so let's see now. This t would be this t here, right? So let's just call this t sub 1 and this t sub 1, right? And we would have to cut this t in half, right? Because that's when it would reach this equilibrium point between going up and going down, right? So that means that the velocity in the y direction would be zero. Just remember that the v sub y is not the same as your delta y, right? These are two different equations. This one tells you the position along the y. This one tells you the velocity in the y direction, okay? All right, so this would be zero, and then you'd have v sub naught sine theta minus g t sub one. And then you can uh, essentially solve for theta with this equation, right? Because we have our uh, t sub 1, right? And we have the v. And we could just solve for theta. So this is actually quite simple, right? We could just write this as sine theta is equal to, well, if I move this over, it'll be a positive uh, g t sub 1. And then I can divide by uh, v sub naught. However, remember... I need half this time, right? So it's going to be one half times this, t1, right? So that means one half t, t sub 1, would just be a 2 underneath here, right? You guys are fine with that, right? I, I'm, I'm hoping you guys will be okay with that. If not, then let me do this. Let me write this as g t sub 1 over 2 v sub naught, right? And so... If we solve for theta, we could just say that theta is equal to sine inverse of g t sub 1 over 2 v sub naught, right? And we could start plugging stuff in, right? So we can say that theta is equal to sine inverse of, let me write that a little better, sine inverse of uh, this will be 9.8 times t sub 1, so that's going to be 0 0.8, and this will be over 2 times 35. Okay, we'll just leave the units out, and essentially our theta is going to be equal to, so it's going to be 6.430619681, or just 6.43. If you guys are using a calculator with a recall button, you can store this for under A, I guess, for angle. So, because it's uh, kind of a long number. I mean, you could truncate it, but I think you should just store this. That way your final answer is not off by so much. So with that said, uh, I'm going to need a little more space, but basically what this is going to allow us to do is we could plug this back into, into this equation here, one, right? So formula-wise, this would be our equation two. Call that equation two. So what we're going to do is plug equation two into equation one, right? And so we know what this result is, so we're just going to stick it inside of here. So actually, you know what? I got a little bit of space here. Let's do that over here on the left. So to get my total time, I have 150. That looks pretty bad. I've got 150 over... I'll start plugging things in. I'm, I'm actually plugging equation... This is equation number one, right? So this would be 35 cosine of the angle, which I'm just going to write a 6.43 dot dot dot, right? And this comes out to be about 4.31284986. So basically 4.3 seconds. Okay, so again, I would store this, uh, maybe T this time, right? I would store it on, on a T. So now what we can do is we can plug, so now that gives us this here. Well, that's great because now we've got the angle and we've got the time. So that means we could just plug it into this equation here. So we'll let this be equation three, actually. It turned out, this actually turned out quite simple, right? Because now we've got our total time, which is going to go inside of here. Actually, this would be total time too. And we have this angle here, which we'll just plug into here. So let's do that on the next page. So this was what we had before. We had uh, delta y equal to t v sub naught sine theta minus one half g t squared. 
and this was total time, this was total time. And so if you have your recall on your calculator, what you can do is you can use that now. So this total time was about 4.312 seconds. I'll just write dot, 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 because you'll be using your, your recall, times V sub naught, which is 35. Let's just you leave the units off. We know it's going to come out to be in meters anyway. So, And then sine of theta. So this is going to be sine of 6.43 dot, 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 the angle, right? That would be degrees. I'll just leave the degree symbol off. Oh, by the way, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Okay, uh, let's see, where are we at? Minus one half times g, which is going to be 9.8. Already the negative is incorporated. And then t sub t squared, right? So this is going to be, again, we have 4.312. So this is going to be uh, 4.312 dot 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 uh, quantity squared. And this should give you an answer of, uh, well, you get a negative answer, negative 74.23693019. So about negative 74.2, let's just say. And while we're not done yet, this is going to give us the position on the y axis, right? But uh, we needed to subtract from it uh, 2.5 or in this case here, you would add 2.5 and just multiply by a negative sign to correct the sign. We could just look at this as a positive direction, right? So we could just say uh, 74.23693019. Uh, minus 2.5. You guys don't have to put in these amount of decimal places. I'm just doing it just to just to be thorough. This will come out to be here's where I'll just go ahead and truncate it. This will give you about 71.737 meters, essentially. And that's it. Uh, the only thing that I used here was that wasn't given to us was the fact that the velocity is zero when the in the wide direction when the ball or the rock reaches the highest point. And then everything else kind of just fit into place just by analysis, just kind of thinking about it, right? Well, if that's all you guys needed, well, in that case, we're good. So as always, guys, good luck with your homework and tests in the future, and thank you for watching.